it is such a beautiful and great opportunity in our lives to come together and worship the lord especially with the brethren from gci asia members from philippines malaysia singapore myanmar nepal bangladesh and this definitely shows that god has come together has come down to bind us together as one family having one father one savior with one spirit one faith and one hope it is such an honor to worship the lord together with all of you the title of my sermon today is eudokia you might have seen it in the notification eudokia is a greek word it is not something uh, unique or uh, a strange word but just to keep uh, the sermon title interesting i have chosen the greek word which means god's intent or good will this word has been taken from the uh, the scripture which has been chosen as a theme for this year's advent in fact this scripture is used everywhere among the christian realms during the advent season as well as during the christmas and the same scripture has been read to us uh, in the scripture reading it is from luke chapter 2 verse 13 to 14 where the angel of the lord has come down to announce the good news to the shepherds in the wilderness the bible reads and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace good will towards man so as we have chosen this theme theme and uh, we have divided various subjects amongst the churches so malaysia and singapore has chosen peace and they have done a great job and in uh, from india we have chosen goodwill and the following week philippines they are going to speak about joy the word edukia means goodwill luke he gives quite a bit of historical details as he starts the gospel especially luke chapter 2 he says during the days of caesar augustus and there was a great census and joseph and mary have went to bethlehem to be recorded in the census so these details which luke is giving us they compel us to interpret this particular scripture in its historical context as well we all know very well that the israelites were under the captivity uh, ex- excuse me uh, the israelites were under the oppression of roman reign from 580 bc onwards israelites were continuously were under the oppression sometimes they were under the oppression of assyria sometimes babylonian and then um, Sirs, they were under the oppression of uh, persia then greeks and then romans among stall roman is the longest oppression they have underwent i imagine the shepherd might have been going uh, taking their sheep to the wilderness to feed probably roman soldiers might have come and have beaten them and might have taken one or two sheep from them for their dinner and looking at that situation the shepherd my shepherds might have cried bitterly in the presence of god god how long are we going to be uh, oppressed how long are we going to struggle like this that is the historical context of this scripture and as well as if you read the bible from malachi to matthew which is almost for 400 years there was no communication from god to the israelites no through no prophets no word that was spoken to the people theologically it is called as silent period there was no communication these 400 years so the state of israelites was prophesied by uh, jeremiah as well as isaiah so uh, jeremiah prophesies like this right in his uh, writing lamentations lamentation chapter 5 verse 20 it reads why do you forget us forever why do you forsaken us so long the israelites were going through the uh, 
depression they were going through such a uh, low struggle in their lives they were questioning god how long lord how long have will you forsake us and uh, book of lamentation ends with this cry and isaiah also prophesies about the israelite situation in isaiah 49 verse 18 but zion said the lord has forsaken me and my lord has forgotten me that is the state of the jews the israelites of first century in that particular situation the angel appeared to the shepherds and said glory to god in the highest and on earth peace and good will good will towards men what do they understand what do we need to understand from that situation and during this time there were so many messiahs in israel during this 150 years of time because people were desperately waiting for a messiah for a uh, so that they can be redeemed they can be set free from the oppression and here comes the angels and announce the good news saying god's goodwill is towards men the first thing we understand from this is god remembered them there was no communication for 400 years and suddenly angel comes and brings forth the word of God which shines the light of hope in the lives of Israelites. So the advent tells and speaks to us saying that God remembers you. He has not forsaken you. We all also must be thinking in our own lives during the last two years. We have been locked up in our own houses. Some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us have been affected financially in career. Some of us might have affected in our own families. And some of us might have lost our own, uh, our beloved ones. And we all were under the oppression and distress. And here comes the message of the advent. As we are meditating the Advent season and the Advent message, I would like to encourage you to believe that God has not forsaken you. God has not forgotten you in the last two years, but he remembers you. That's, that is the first message he would like to uh, communicate to us. It is just like how the God of Israel appeared to Moses and said, I heard the cries of uh, Israelites. I remember my friend Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and I have come down to redeem them. So may this word of hope comfort you that as we are meditating uh, the advent of the Lord that God remembers you and he has not forgotten you. And another aspect we can learn from this is this. We can find goodwill of God in the birth of a baby. It, it is speaking about the goodwill, but this is also connected with the message that angels proclaim, saying, For unto you a Savior has been born, and you will find him wrapped in clothes, and you will find him in the manger. It, uh, the angel is announcing about the birth of a baby. What is the goodwill of God we can find in the birth of a baby? To understand this, we need to see the culture and uh, religious differences between West and East. The Western minds, whenever they have a crisis, they look for a movement or they look for a revolution. Just like French Revolution, you can we can think about Russian Revolution. There are so many revolutions that have taken place in our world. Industrial Revolution, Technical Revolution. So West always thinks about a revolution or a movement. But the Eastern minds were not so. Whenever the Eastern people have a crisis, they look for a birth. The birth of someone who is going to save them. Birth of someone who is going to change that situation. The birth of someone who is going to redeem them and set them free from all the oppression. Why? Why the birth is? I think 
the birth is the best way to come into the very situation of the people people who bring revolution can come but they may not be able to relate to our situation clearly as the children who were born to us birth is some the birth is the best way where somebody can come and step into the shoes of the people they can experience the oppression they can experience the culture they can experience the uh, pain pressure and everything so god has come down to us as a little baby as a little baby into our families which tells that god is stepping into our very situation he is coming into every aspect of human life and he is going to experience every aspect of human life jesus came down as a human and the scripture uh, uh, speaks uh, something interesting the scripture does not say that uh, uh, he, uh, he he this is a good news unto jews alone but this uh, angels proclaim this is a good news unto all mankind so jesus has come down to the very situation of all human kind and what is the worst position a human can go the worst position human can ever go is being buried under the 6 foot uh, under underground and jesus has come down and he lived for 33 years he grew in very uh, common and very simple economical uh, conditions and he suffered the violence from people from religious people from politicians from uh, soldiers from everyone he suffered and he suffered even the betrayal of his own friends and he died and was buried underground for 3 days and on the third day he rose again from the dead through which he is telling us look i have come to you i am coming into your very situation even to the very uh, depth of your situation or the worst position that you can ever go and he is coming down to us to that very situation and through his resurrection he is telling us i have broken all the oppression that you have i have broken all the pressures and all the chains that you have in your own life and this and the proof for that is the nail pierced hands he came into our very situation and has broken it the very struggle we all humans are going through and which we could not overcome till now is the death israel israel was under the oppression and but romans also were the were under the oppression of death and all humanity was under the the oppression of death and sin and corruption and he came into that and has broken it through his resurrection and offering us the hope and even greater thing we can uh, we can find is the resurrection of jesus is our hope and future colossian chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 says in him dwells all the fullness of the godhead bodily and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power jesus came down to us as a boy bringing all the glory of god into a human flesh otherwise the human future and destiny is corruption and death as jesus came as a boy he has broken it and here scripture says the fullness of god had bodily dwelt in the lord where can we see the fullness of god is it during the massive great creation is it during when when god divided the red sea is it uh, during the second coming of jesus where Uh, he is going to come in power with glory and angels but the scripture testifies to us saying the fullness of god had body laid dwelleth in the lord the fullness of god the full glory of god can be seen in a human flesh like you and me so our destiny is no more corruption and death but the glory of god another aspect of 
the good will of God can be seen in his doing. One of the historical and revolutionary teachings of Jesus is unconditional forgiveness. Nobody in the history have taught about forgiveness as Jesus did. If you look at even the history in the Bible, we can find very little spoken about forgiveness. And everywhere we find the themes like eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and vengeance, and uh, violence. That's what the earth was filled with. But Jesus comes and speaks about these revolutionary teachings about unconditional forgiveness. And in fact, in his doing, he has expressed the same. And especially Jesus, he has forgiven the people who tortured him and killed him, crying to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even people ever asked for forgiveness, he has forgiven them. People say, if somebody come and ask me for forgiveness, then definitely I would forgive. By nature, forgiveness does not have any, uh, uh, any kind of requirements. By nature, forgiveness cannot have any conditions. A true forgiveness comes without any conditions. If we are asking somebody to come and confess so that I may forgive, then what we are offering is not forgiveness. We are looking for the satisfaction of our own ego first. Then we would like to extend uh, the forgiveness or give up the right to punish them. But Jesus is the first person in the world, the first religious teacher who taught us about unforgive unconditional forgiveness. And he did the same with us. As the scripture says uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, Apostle Paul writes, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. God is not counting any of our sins. He is not seeking any of our confessions. He doesn't require our confession because everything is naked in his sight. He knows everything. He is the one who searches the intentions of the heart. He doesn't require any for con uh, uh, confessions. And he is coming forward and forgiving us and reconciling us, not imputing any sins upon us. Why? The answer is nothing but the very nature of God as Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. He is a God of love. He is a God of relationships. That is the very reason He has forgiven and reconciled all of us unto Himself, not counting any of our sins. This is another goodwill of God unto all humans uh, we have to remember during the Advent season when God sent His Son as a baby into this world. He is expressing his forgiveness unto all humanity. He reconciled all humanity. He is not staying back in heaven saying, I don't have anything to do with you dirty people. But he is coming down close to us to express his love, his forgiveness and his reconciliation to us. This is the goodwill of God that is expressed in the Advent. And the goodwill of God also can be seen in his opinion. The title of my message was Idokia. The translation is God's intention. The ESV translates the same words this way. And on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. Idokia says that God is pleased with humanity. He is not angry with the humanity. He is not having any contentions with the humanity. He is not uh, holding any sins or grudges against humanity. But he is very much happy with the humanity. That's what Edekia says. The goodwill of God says. The incarnation, death, burial, resurrection and ascension of Jesus are not out of pressure for God or necessity for God, but they are out of pleasure of God. That's what Edukia says. This is uh, peace for those 
who are pleasing to God. Humanity is pleasing to God. That's why he has come down and suffered all this. So Advent says that we are pleased to God. We are, God is pleased with us. As the scripture also says in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. It says, The Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. As much as we are happy to see babies, this baby Jesus is very much happy to see all of humanity. He came out of his pleasure and he is in our midst. He rejoices over us with singing. This is, this is where I really like our Indian Bollywood movies. After every romantic beautiful incident, there will be a song. And the hero, heroine, they found their love and they sing songs. That is how it is written. The God, he is in your midst. He rejoices over you with singing. He sings for you and me. It is not we coming every Sunday and saying hallelujah and singing songs. But he is singing songs unto us. He is adoring us out of his love. That is the goodwill of God. That is the message of Advent. God is very much pleased with you and me. And he is coming down to our very situation. To redeem us out of it and tells us he is very much pleased with us. And presently, we may, not, we may think this Advent is something that happened 2000 years ago. And uh, what is the relevance that we have? Let me tell you, my brethren. Every day that we are living today is Advent. Every moment we pray, pray to God, we pray to God saying, God, come into my situation. Help me out. God, come, Jesus, come. Set us free from this bondage. Set us free from the oppression. Set us free from the pain and uh, struggles that we are going through. We want you in our lives. I believe everybody might have prayed these prayers. So every time we pray, it is about Advent. We are looking forward for the second coming of Jesus. The days we are living, are e every day is an Advent day. We are looking for Jesus. So in conclusion, Eudokia, the goodwill of God, or good intention of God, tells us that God has not forgotten us. He knows our very situation and he remembers us. And Edukia says that God comes into our very situation and he sets us free from the bondage that we are in and he gives us the freedom and he redeems us from that situation. And Edukia says through his doing, God has reconciled all of us, not counting our sins against us, not counting any of our trespasses, but he is dealing with us according to his tender mercies and loving kindness and reconciled us. And Edukia says that God is delighted in us. He is very much happy with us. He rejoices over us with gladness and singing. And every day in our daily lives, every time we pray, Edukia, the Advent says, the goodwill of God says, the God is ready to come into our lives. As we find in the scripture, Jesus was knocking the door and waiting for us to open the door so that he can dine with us. He has come to our doorsteps. That is what uh, Advent is about. I do, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Edukia is about. He is at our doorstep. And so let us all pray as John prayed in Revelation 2.20. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. And John says, Amen, even so. Come, Lord Jesus, come. He is coming. He is ready to come. Are we ready to receive him? The advent of Jesus, it fills our hearts with joy, hope, and comfort. May the Lord bless you all with his spirit so that you may experience peace, joy, and comfort, understanding the good will of God. Edu, um, uh, Edokia, the good intentions of God for your life. May God bless you.